Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I want to go over a subject that I was totally wrong about. Alright, so just a couple weeks ago I made a video on Thunderbolt 3 and external GPUs. And I made some claims that it just wasn't really worth doing because you were bottlenecked by four lanes of PCIe Gen 3 lanes and that you're spending all this money and you're going to have such a bottleneck experience and you need to do like a really cheap GPU to make it worth it. But then what's the point over other gaming laptops? And you guys in the comment section, comment section, totally let me know how wrong I was about that subject. And I'm really grateful for it because this is a subject that I'm really interested in. And I'm glad to see that there have been a lot of improvement and that I was wrong, to be very clear. So to start off, I was wrong about the PCIe four lanes that were the bottleneck. That was not the bottleneck. And um, a user named Rodpad let me know and provided a link for me to go check it out. And Tech Power Up did a test where they took a 2080 Ti and did 16 lanes, 8 lanes, and 4 lanes to show the performance drop off. And going down to 4 lanes of PCIe 3.0 only took away about 10% or so of performance. Some of the tests were more like 5%, some of them were more like 10%. So that's not really that much drop off at all now of course yes you're still losing performance but in this scenario where you only have four lanes losing 10 percent compared to 16 lanes really isn't that big of a deal whatsoever so that was not the bottleneck which i thought it was so yes i was totally wrong on that regard completely the other place i was wrong was well there was a bottleneck but it just wasn't with the pcie lanes the bottleneck was with the chipset now as again you guys in the comment section explained to me the older eGPUs with Thunderbolt 3 connection. The Thunderbolt 3 connection went through the uh, the chipset. And by going through the chipset and then going to the CPU added in a lot of delay, a lot of latency, and a lot of uh, constraints, right? Which really ate up that performance, which is why the performance on a lot of the older tests that were done showed pretty weak performance. However, that all changes with Ice Lake CPUs from Intel. If you're lucky enough to have one or you can get your hands on an Ice Lake uh, laptop, well, that goes straight to the CPU. It's integrated. So no chipset. Uh, you don't have to go through the chipset to have an external GPU. You just go straight to the CPU. All right. This helps greatly. There was another article I found where people were testing this and they saw an uplift of 13 to 25 percent, depending on the game and the resolution, just by switching from Coffee Lake to Ice Lake. All right. Now, remember, Ice Lake only has four cores and eight threads. So you're losing actually a little bit of CPU performance, but you're gaining all of this GPU performance because you're not going through the chipset. Because of that, it really does change everything and i'm really excited to see that this is the way that things are going so in the future we're going to see this become even better and become more affordable now some of you were bringing up this idea of usb4 which is essentially thunderbolt 3 but in a universal package to be on cheaper laptops and amd laptops and so on now this will probably open up the door for external gpus but i'm not sure if it will right off the bat be as good as thunderbolt 3 connected straight to an intel cpu i could be wrong could be totally wrong on that let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong again, but it probably won't be the most premium experience, but it'll still be a more achievable or universal experience. Anyways, getting back to the Ice Lake CPUs, this is really fascinating and really amazing, to be honest, because now you really do have a middle ground. You can get yourself a decent laptop that'll last you quite a while, thin and light. You can take on the go. You can come home and plug it in, and you're only going to see, you know, somewhere around 10%, maybe a little bit more, but somewhere around 10% drop off in performance. And... You could have your external display and your mouse and keyboard and all that other good stuff and still have a very close to desktop experience without having to have a whole desktop. And, you know, you can swap out the GPU. Eventually, you might upgrade your laptop. And so it, it is a viable solution now for a decent amount of people who are in that category. I'm not in that category. As you can tell, I have a desktop and I do have a laptop that I use for work. But in the future... I might be in that category when I want to downsize, when I want to save some space, or I just want to have one machine that I use for everything. That's something that I'm looking forward to, and it might come sooner than I think. So, for instance, um, I had to recently give away my ThinkPad to my dad because he needs a new laptop for work. Now, I'm kind of sitting here like, well, what am I going to use? And I'm using some really crummy laptop right now, but I'm thinking of getting a new one sometime this year. And now I'm kind of torn between getting an integrated Thunderbolt 3 
laptop to try this whole thing out with external GPUs, even though I don't really need it because, like I said, I have this guy. But the other option is the new uh, AMD Ryzen 4000 APUs for the laptops. I know it's Zen 2, but they use 4000 for some reason. So Zen 2 in laptops for their APUs. I'm interested in that as well. And I know those should start hitting the market in, I think, May of this year which is my birthday month, so maybe I'll go ahead and splurge a little bit and get something like that. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think I should do. Should I go external GPU, Ice Lake, laptop, and you know experiment with that, or should I go the route of the new AMD laptops coming out later this year? Anyways, just wanted to let you guys know I was totally wrong in that last video. The new stuff coming out makes external graphics cards way more viable, and it's only going to get better as time goes on. Again, I was wrong. Thank you for reaching out in the comment section and letting me know why I was wrong and pointing me in the direction to where I could do my own research and learn a lot more about this subject. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.